Today, we take a look at five things that you should look for when purchasing a compound microscope. Trying to answer that question, which microscope is right for me, can be fairly complex, and of course, it depends on your specific application and budget. But I do have five things that you should look for when trying to compare microscopes to figure out which one is going to be the best for your situation. Number one, and arguably the most important decision that you'll make when purchasing a compound microscope, would be the objectives. All right, so before I get into objectives, we are going to talk about bright field objectives, and we'll exclude things such as fluorescence and phase contrast, or else this video would be fairly long. The two types of objectives that you'll probably come across are achromat objectives and plan achromat objectives. Here I have the Euromax B-scope, and on this side, the AccuScope 3000 LED. Now, both microscopes do have options for achromat and plan achromat objectives, but the B-scope, we currently have achromats, and the 3000 LED, we have plan achromats. Achromat objectives are less expensive and have an image flatness across about 80% of the field of view, with a slight drop-off on the outer 20%. Plan achromat objectives are a little bit more expensive, but do have flatness across the entire field of view. The number two thing to consider when purchasing a compound microscope would be the illumination. Traditionally, microscopes used halogen bulbs for illumination. Nowadays, more and more models use LEDs as the light source. As you know, LEDs can last for over 20,000 hours. With halogen bulbs, you do have to replace them every couple thousand hours, but there is another thing to notice when purchasing a halogen illuminated microscope, and that is that the color temperature will vary between the lowest intensity and the highest intensity. So as you increase the intensity on a halogen microscope, you'll notice the color temperature go from a warm yellow up to a cool blue color temperature. And this can be sort of difficult to manage, especially if you're using a camera to capture images, you'll constantly have to do a white balance. So again, I think LED is the way to go. The third thing to consider when purchasing a compound microscope would be the viewing head. Our B-scope microscope features a binocular viewing head and the AccuScope 3000 LED, a trinocular. So this one is fairly straightforward. Do you need to use a camera to capture images? Do you think that you'll need a camera in the future? If so, you'll want to go with the trinocular head. Now, most dedicated microscopy cameras use a C-mount, and most microscope models come with several different C-mount options that are paired with a certain sensor size for the camera. There are also DSLR mounts available for some microscope models, not all. So if you plan on using a consumer camera with your microscope, you'll have to make sure that there is a specific mount available for that DSLR. It's always best to plan ahead. If you think that you'll need a camera in the future, go ahead and spend the little bit of extra money to get the trinocular head. You will save yourself some money in the long run. The number four thing to consider when purchasing a compound microscope are the materials that the microscope is made of. So we're gonna put materials into two categories and that's gonna be the body or frame of the microscope and the gears for the fine and coarse focus. So starting with the body, some microscopes, like both of these, feature cast aluminum frames. This means that they are extremely durable and can withstand a lot of abuse and misuse. Now, most of the time, you can look at the manufacturer's description and figure out what the body is made of. But if you can't find that information, it may mean that there's a lot of plastic used in the construction of the frame. So the second material category would be the material used for the fine and coarse focus assembly. You're constantly moving the fine focus and the coarse focus on a microscope to focus your sample. So it stands to reason that a metal gear assembly would be preferred. Over time and after lots of use and abuse, plastic gears can fail. And if a gear does break, it can be fairly complex to repair. You'll have to look for spare parts or you can reach out to somebody like us to do the repairs for you. But whenever possible, go with a metal gear assembly. And finally, number five. 
And this one may not be for everybody, but certainly if microscopes are being purchased for a classroom environment, a college or a university, this is a big one. And that is cord storage. So I see it all the time. I go into a college or a university and they've purchased microscopes without cord storage. And what happens? Well, the cords get wrapped around the head, they get wrapped around the objectives, sometimes too tight, and that can cause damage. Some microscopes come with built-in cord storage, like the Euromex B-Scope. You can see we have cord storage integrated into the frame itself. Some microscopes have cord storage options, like the AccuScope 3000 LED. You can see we have four screws here that allow you to put on cord hangers to wrap the cord around the back. So there you have it, five things to look for when purchasing a compound microscope. If you're looking for a new compound microscope, you can visit our website at microscopesupply.com. And if you have questions, feel free to chat with us online or email us at sales at microscopesupply.com.